Hi, this is Lee, and I'm an environmental educator with the Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust. And I'm here today to tell you about my adventures with Blanding's turtles. You've probably heard of painted turtles before, or sun turtles as they're called, and snapping turtles, but have you ever heard of a Blanding's turtle? Scientists have listed the Blanding's turtle as a threatened species on the Massachusetts Endangered Species List, meaning that it's likely to become endangered in the future. You may be wondering where Blanding's turtles live. Well, Blanding's turtles mostly live in the water, and they spend most of their lives among various types of wetlands. They like areas with less tree cover and more shrubs or bushes and soft, mucky bottoms. This type of habitat provides them protection and allows them to find sources of food who also live in this type of area. Blanding's turtles are mostly carnivores, which means they eat meat. They like to eat things like worms, snails, crayfish, and baby insects. They'll also eat frogs, tadpoles, small fish, and even plants that grow in the water. In late spring, when it's time to dig a nest and lay their eggs, they need dry or sandy spots and often have to cross roads like this mother turtle did. Turtle eggs and hatchlings, which are baby turtles, also provide an important seasonal food source for some mammals and birds. Hawks, skunks, raccoons, fox, and even snakes all like to eat eggs and hatchlings. My own adventures with native turtles began in 2008 when I first saw huge snapping turtles and painted turtles laying eggs in my yard. As a scientist, I did some research and discovered that my yard and neighborhood near Lowell is a nesting area to three different species of turtles. These turtles and their offspring have probably been living here for hundreds of years, long before there were any houses or roads. So I wasn't too surprised to see another female turtle laying eggs by the side of the road one evening in June. Since we've been looking for this type of turtle at the Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust properties, I had become familiar with the differences in Blanding's turtles versus snapping turtles or painted turtles. I was sure as I walked up to it that it was a Blanding's because they have high domed top shells called a carapace that are dark and covered with yellow flecks. They also have long yellow throats and chins, which make it recognizable at a distance. The lower shell or plastron is also yellow with large black blotches. So just to be sure, I took a photo and I sent it to the expert biologists at the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service so they could confirm that it was in fact a Blanding's turtle. I was so excited when they told us it was a Blanding's turtle. This began the next step of protecting this nest. We got special permission called a permit to cover this nest so that no predators could get underneath and try to eat the eggs. After we covered the nest with special materials, we watched over it for several days to make sure that it was safe. Then, scientists from Zoo New England came out to verify that there were eggs in the nest. Make it turtle, but that's the idea. And I'm just gonna really gently now try to, you know, archeologist out <laughs> the top of the first egg, which should be again about this depth, but a little further in. Right. So here is our first uncovered egg here. When I first was putting in the temp logger here, I uh, uncovered the tops of four eggs. So that's the minimum that's in there. Okay. Uh, Blanding's turtles generally lay between eight to 12 eggs, but they can go as low as five or as high as 15. Uh, I don't know much about the turtle that laid this egg, uh, this, this clutch. Generally, the bigger the turtle is, the more eggs it will lay. Um, and the top of this egg looks really good. You can see some like striations, but nothing problematic. The color's good. If it was for sure inviable, it'd often be really gray and moldy already. 
So this is a really nice sign. It was now going to be our responsibility to watch over and help protect this nest for the next two to three months until the eggs hatched. Then on August 23rd, after waiting and watching over the nest for two and a half months, we finally had the first two eggs hatch. We were so excited to see these adorable little baby turtles and to know that they had survived a drought and were protected from predators for the last couple of months. Over the next few days, we ended up having eight baby turtles hatch from the eggs. About a week later, the scientists from the zoo came back to make sure that all the eggs had hatched from the nest. Oh, it's oh good. my goodness. Yeah, that's the Yeah, this shells. is the shell that somebody hatched out if you want. So it. cool. Yeah. You sure you want to wait? You hold the shell for us. And soon after, we were cheering on the baby turtles as they were learning to eat pellets for the first time. Oh my god, that's so cool. After staying at my house for a couple of weeks, the turtles were ready to move to an aquarium at the Lowell Parks and Conservation Trust office. My co-workers and I spent quite a while getting their new habitat just right for them. They adapted to it and seemed to love it right away. The turtles are growing bigger every month and doing well thanks to members of the trust and dedicated staff and volunteers who feed the turtles twice a day during the week. The turtle tanks have warm water, about 80 degrees Fahrenheit, and they have a UV lamp to mimic the sun and bask under. This helps their shells become stronger. They're also learning to eat different types of food, including salmon, kale, and shrimp, and soon they'll eat live prey like worms and baby insects. All of this caretaking will give them a head start so they'll be more resilient when they're released back to the wild in the late spring. Many of our native turtles are only a little bigger than a quarter when they're first born. But when they're released back to their home wetland, they'll be the size of a three or four year old turtle. This whole process has been quite an adventure, and I look forward to more adventures with our native turtles in the future. We hope you enjoyed learning about Blanding's turtles and how special they are to us and our environment. <laughs>